by AWS, which services is basically uh, you can use uh, database services while using the AWS. Okay, so basically our RD BMS is basically remote uh, database services, which is uh, provided, uh, which option is provided in the AWS uh, web services. Okay, basically it uh, it is uh, called as SQL and Aurora. Uh, which is uh, which is the uh, AWS own services uh, which managed by uh, AWS own uh, the self okay so it is called the RDS it's basically the relational database services okay so RDS is and Aurora uh, is the basically uh, two database services which is uh, controlled by uh, AWS uh, then uh, itself only, okay? And it's uh, great to join, means it is uh, easy to uh, join and easy to, you can use uh, while you are uh, organization, okay? While you are uh, collecting data, while you store your data on the on the SQL databases, is, is it easy to indi integrate, easy to configure on your uh, premises in premises uh, systems? So basically, this is uh, the database uh, type, which is uh, which is um, easy to uh, use and uh, easy to integrate on your uh, premises. Okay. So there are uh, many more options is providing is available in the AWS uh, web services. It is a uh, no SQL database. Okay. So basically in this <coughs> database, there are uh, many more options uh, is, is there for like DynamoDB. Okay, DynamoDB is basically uh, uh, the database which is uh, stored your data in the JSON format. So that uh, that option you can also, uh, use it for your uh, database services. Okay, then uh, one more is the elastic cache. If your uh, cache, if your cache memory you are saving in the particular key value pairs, for that reason you uh, you can also use the elastic cache, el elastic cache memory. Okay. So that are the option also there available in this. Uh, in the AWS database services, then you can also uh, uh, use the Neptune databases, uh, which is basically give you the gra uh, graphs and uh, graphs in the output, and you can uh, monitor. You can monitor your uh, your uh, your uh, daily uh, requirements or your daily uh, things, which is uh, in a graph in a <clears throat> in a graph output so it will also will help you to monitoring the monitoring the systems okay then the document db is also there uh, the you can use the mongo for document db you can use the mongo db server which is uh, saved your uh, which can you can save your uh, database uh, uh, in a document format on your on your machines okay so one more thing is the uh, key spaces okay for uh, Apache uh, Cassandra. Basically, you can uh, also uh, save your uh, key spaces on the particular database, which is called the Apache Cassandra. You can uh, integrate this with your uh, organization also. So these are the basically options which you can uh, uh, integrate and which you can uh, configure on your local. Uh, on your uh, in premises, or you can uh, use via AWS uh, cloud services also. Okay, so uh, there more on uh, like object store. If you want to store uh, big objects like uh, big files and uh, big data, okay, for that uh, you can use our S3 bucket uh, as we uh, learn in the, our previous session. The S3 bucket is basically help you to. Uh, store your uh, file uh, folder your data any any format of uh, file you can store in the particular uh, databases okay so s3 bucket you can use also to to save and to back up your uh, your databases okay <clears throat>
now there are also uh, uh, glacier s e bucket option there uh, we learn right for uh, for creating backups and archives archive the uh, storage right so for that also uh, you can use the database for taking backups to taking screenshot at a at a time or at a scheduled time you can uh, you can uh, uh, snapshot your backups for that you if you are uh, data will loss in any emergency in any case in case you lost any data or someone uh, uh, <clears throat> for your server so for that uh, for that purpose in that scenario you can use the uh, glacier backup backup and archive to uh, snapshot while using the uh, using this uh, database services okay so there are uh, data warehouse uh, option is there okay to for equal to, uh, for basically data warehouse is basically uh, store uh, sql analytics and uh, power bi projects okay so for it is uh, it saved like uh, bi projects and uh, sql an analytics uh, files and uh, files in the particular database uh, data warehouse uh, option okay you can also uh, you can also uh use for example uh, redshift athena and emr uh, <clears throat> basically these are the uh, database services which is uh, which is available in the uh, aws uh, aws database services so that so that you can uh, so that you can consider and you can implement with this okay for search option the open search uh, which is uh, the free tags and un unstructured searches and that also you can implement while using this uh, data database type so basically these are the database types which you are uh, use using in your uh, uh, in your organization as your requirement okay so for uh, graphs uh, graphs is basically uh, amazon neptune we use uh, most uh, for uh, taking the graph so basically it is display a relationship between the data uh, how you just uh, data use case uh, the query the query then the input output uh, uh, input output data right so all this uh, query all these uh, things it is uh, you can <clears throat> you can consider and uh, you can uh, take this uh, data backup uh, option uh, which is uh, available in the aws itself okay then the ledger we can also uh, also store the amazon quantum ledger uh, database that we used to uh, used to uh, used to collect the data uh, for the for the amazon amazon quantum okay then the time series also the amazon time stream is uh, is the provide uh, provide the time uh, for example you have if you have uh, for example if you have a uh, uh, sql sql data and uh, database and that database needs to be uh, 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 backup uh, for daily basis okay so for that you can also uh, integrate this time series which can help you to take backup which can help you to take backup uh, with a particular time or daily basis okay so you can also configure this time series uh, for uh database backup uh database backup uh in daily daily <coughs> daily stream okay so basically these are the database type you can uh you can implement on your uh on your uh on your on your database okay while uh storing the data while uh, managing the data okay so that are the uh, main option which is uh, available in our aws uh, cloud services okay so now let's understand more okay so let's understand what is the aws rds overview okay so basically <coughs> aws rds means uh, the aws relational database services which is uh, stand for rds is stand for relational database services it is managed by the database services okay for database services you can use sql as well as uh, 
is a query language okay so basically it is use a <coughs> sql for the query language for you can uh, give the query and take the query for uh, for output uh, while using the aws uh, uh, rds which is uh, uh, which is managed by the aws own okay so basically rds is allowed to create database in the cloud that are managed by the aws right so there are many options many database services uh, is uh, you can use uh, okay you can use by your premises on your organization but uh, the, it is um, basically managed by the uh, aws is okay so for that uh, uh, there are uh, option is uh, my sql maria db the oracle oracle have uh, also a good uh, uh, database services which is uh, available in the aws also then there are microsoft sql services uh, also there then there uh, aws aurora is there aws aurora is basically uh, property database which can uh, can which can uh, uh, High, which can manage a uh, high uh, high input output uh, uh, query how it input uh, input and output uh, query which you can uh, consider okay for that uh, purpose for that scenario you can use the uh, aws aurora okay so let's understand uh, one by one okay so first is the amazon rds so basically, yes, as I mentioned, Amazon RDS uh, is uh, managed by the Post, <coughs> Postgre SQL, MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, uh, MariaDB, and Custom. Okay, so you can uh, manage this uh, things while your requirement. You can use the MySQL, Oracle, SQL database, uh, Maria database as a requirement. You can uh, consider and configure. Uh, uh, and as your requirement okay so this is basically the features uh, you can say options uh, which is provided in aws okay so uh, then the previous uh, rds instance size and uh, ebs volume type and size okay you can provisionize uh, rds size you can uh, 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 add and you can remove uh, any instance sizes also uh, and you can also uh, attach and uh, remove the EBS uh, elastic blocks uh, storage volume type and uh, it, it you can also increase and decrease the size okay while using the AWS uh, RDS services that are uh, options are available also so for from that you can uh, also uh, enable this particular uh, database size and remove and uh, degrade the database sizes also okay uh, now now there are uh, auto scaling capability for storage is also there okay so for example if you have uh, using your 90 percent uh, data uh, database uh, okay storage so the, the so there are uh, option are available to increase uh, auto scale to up to uh, you have to set up to limits like you have for example right now you have uh, 500 tb okay and uh, if you have uh, using uh, your strength 90 percent strength on your uh, data uh, database okay so it will also increase by your 400 7, 700 tb or uh, or or your required or uh, you can mention over there and then you can also uh, decrease by your uh, uh, database uh, store for example um, now 50 percent use utilize uh, as of now so you can also uh, uh, consider the situation or the rules uh, which is basically uh, reduce your storage between your your requirement okay so basically these are the options which is provided by the uh, rds services so you can uh, configure and you can use it by it by itself okay support for read replica and multiple uh, availability zone okay so rds basically uh, rds basically support the read replicas it means it will create uh, it will create the uh, 
the snapshot as you can say the same uh, database on the uh, on the multiple regions so uh, so you can uh, access and you can read the uh, particular data uh, while using uh, while using the multiple uh, uh, availability zone because uh, if for example if you have uh, receiving multiple traffics for in, for uh, in a certain time so that uh, your 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 services uh, your service request is basically the diversify between the multiple az and and you get you get some data for uh, for high availability right so it it basically provide you high availability to store to to access your data and uh, and it is work on the master and uh, uh, read uh, read format so if the master have the the access to edit and uh, delete any data and but uh, the read option that can all that can only access the data mm -hmm. database within your uh, within uh, the multiple availability zone which is created uh, the the multiple data sets okay the security through iam security groups and kms ssl in the transit so it means you can also uh, create iam rules and iam user to giving the uh, database uh, option or database uh, security while using the iam iam services okay as you know uh, in iam we can create uh, one user and you can give the uh, permission uh, to particular permission to access the particular uh, amazon services uh, uh, amazon services so uh, so in that case you can also create one iam user and you can also give the uh, remote database uh, relational database uh, whole uh, whole full access so that can also manage uh, while using the <coughs> while using the rds uh, okay now you can also uh, create a group uh, for for example if you have um, more more data you can you have to uh, monitor right so you can also create group and you can give the uh, access on the particular group that can also uh, that can also manage <coughs> uh, that can also manage the uh, data uh, databases services and uh, uh, options uh, which is included uh, or you can give any uh, rules or uh, you can give any permission for that group that can also uh, manage the remote desktop uh, relational data services okay now there are kms options available kms it means key management system okay so that key management system you can also uh, uh uh managed by the rds uh, group or iam group using this so an ssl in transit you can also uh, access while the ssl or uh, uh, using okay so these are the basically things which is uh, uh which options are available in the in the aws rds amazon rds okay so and one more option the manual uh, database snapshot for longer term recovery and also pro provide the auto backup also right so as i mentioned you can also uh, take manually snapshot for database uh, at the same time you can also uh, provide the auto backup for example if you have uh, if you want uh, every 30 days backup you want to save so you can uh, also set uh, set uh, set at a at a certain way that you can uh, take the every 30 day backup every 15 day backup every every day backup that also you can <clears throat> that also you can uh, consider and you can uh, configure at our, our, our amazon rds services okay so now let's let's understand what is the amazon aurora okay so basically amazon aurora is the prop <coughs> proprietary technology uh, from aws uh, which is uh, not open source uh, which uh, which is owned by uh, aws uh, cloud services uh, itself right so basically it is uh, <coughs> it is the 
uh, sponsor of the post gray sql and uh, my sql both suppose the aurora db aurora database basically uh, is uh, use the high high performance or high database uh, uh, system uh, scenario uh, while using okay so aws aurora is the aws cl cloud optimized and it claims 5 5x performance improvement over mysql on rds right so it will very fast it is very fast uh, services uh, while uh, for the aws aurora uh, okay it is um, five five times uh, more uh, powerful than the mysql okay and the three time uh, more performance on the postgres okay so these are the this is the benefits of the aurora but at the same time, uh, Aurora is the costly services, which is uh, provided by the AWS, right? So <clears throat> AWS is basically, AWS is basically providing the uh, high optimization uh, database server, uh, which is called Aurora and it's uh, owned by AWS uh, oh, its own uh, for if you have more data and if you, uh, if you have uh, store more more on data and uh, the services which you are uh, going to be implement for that purpose, uh, the organization will use the Amazon Aurora database services. It is very fast and it is uh, it performs and uh, it responses very uh, high. So uh, and also it is uh, very. 20% uh, uh, more expensive uh, uh, on the basic SQL, okay? So basically, Aurora storage automatically grow increase uh, in, uh, increase of 10 GB and up to 64 TB, right? So it has, uh, it, uh, it has uh, a react uh, regarding uh, your database, your data query, uh, your input and output uh, uh, traffic, right? So Aurora is cost more than the RDS 20% more. So basically yeah, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the common uh, RDS uh, the relational uh, database services uh, is uh, cheaper than 20%, okay, to the uh, Amazon Aurora. It's okay, so, but, uh, but Aurora is a more uh, efficient uh, the, in the particular database services, okay. So <clears throat> this is basically the things uh, which you are, sorry, uh, which you are uh, using while using the Amazon uh, Aurora, and it is uh, not a free tire. Now uh, you have to pay every hour, hour uh, uh, every hour in the for using this uh, Amazon Aurora services. I will show you in the practical how much it cost in per hour. Okay, sorry, okay. So let's understand the <coughs> RDS uh, dependency and uh, read replicas. Okay. So basically, uh, the scale of the read workload for your DB, as you can see uh, in the in the in the diagram. Okay. Uh, there are uh, database services is available uh, in the as you can see the M the rds master the m is for uh, stands for master okay so basically what it uh, what it uh, needs to be done okay so for example you created one uh, uh, database uh, database on the availability zone a for example it is availability zone a and the uh, you can just create one database uh, and uh, it was on the read write. You can have a read and write permission on this particular uh, master uh, database services. Okay, so RDS is basically uh, create uh, one more uh, <coughs> one more database which is called the read replica. Okay, so in read replica there are option is available. Okay, so in read replica there are uh second uh seconds uh secondary you can say the secondary database uh it will create and it will give you the services from this uh but uh but as you can see there are only the read only permission is available on this particular uh read replica 
read replica it means replica it means the same uh, same copy of the uh, uh, machine okay so basically this are uh, this is the same machine of this master uh, master rds okay so uh, so so uh, while you while anyone uh, reaches your application it and and take uh, access for your data right so it will uh, diversify uh, the, uh, to this uh, read replica because uh, it is also the same data have uh, uh, available which is provided by uh, the master uh, database right so uh, this also security provided uh, system because uh, the both are, are running in the different subnet way subnet the first one is master as you can see there are a uh, configure in the subnet a then the uh, second one is uh, the in the subnet 2 so there are uh, working on the different different uh, networking uh, network uh, pool right so there are basically uh, there are basically uh, serving the same data but using in the different way in the different uh, or uh, different availability zone okay so basically uh, this is the features which is provided in the aws to 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 set your multiple uh, replicas on the multiple uh, region so what will be happen so if you are uh, if your uh, if your user base is uh, between the uh, between the particular availability zone he can uh, access the uh, data while uh, in in the high availability and low latency uh, uh, features right so this is the basically uh, option which is provided in the uh, rds okay so basically uh, rds is scale the read workload for your uh, database uh, option right so you can uh, create multiple uh, read replicas in the in the in the particular or multiple availability zone right so from that uh, your server can give the services uh, for the users okay so but it is only the read only mode but if you want to add anything so you have to be the uh, owner or root right from that you can uh, access the master uh, uh, rds server and uh, you can uh, edit and you can uh, edit anything in the particular uh, uh, relational database services okay so it can create up to five read replicas you can create up to five rep, uh, read replicas maximum on the on the different different availability zone right so basically it uh, it is uh, give you the high availability uh, while using the while you uh, using the rds on uh, on your organization or on your app, on your application required right so it will give you the high availability and low latency uh, uh, option which is uh, available in this while you using the rds you can uh, consider this option okay so data is only the return to the main db so if you uh, return any data if you add any data or if you edit any data you have to uh, uh you have to access only the master uh, database only the uh, and the other replicas have only the read permissions so you cannot edit or you cannot write any data or uh, uh, in the particular uh, read replicas uh, databases so basically the there are one master uh, database and the other other one are the replicas which you are uh, giving the services while you using this okay so let's understand the uh, deployments and uh, in the multiple is it how it uh, manage and how you can uh, deploy the database services in the multiple uh, availability zone okay so uh, uh, let's understand first the image the <coughs> okay so there are one amazon rds then it's replication cross uh, availability zone the different availability zone you can <coughs> you can consider as a flare fa uh, failover database okay so the failover database have also uh, in case 
<clears throat> the issue of main uh, main database you have the traffic will route to the the uh, failover database okay and this is the main database service server so in main database server the application uh, have to uh, read and write permission right so it can easily uh, take the data take the queries uh, to this uh, database services but uh, if you have the failover services in, uh, for example, in case the main database server is going to be uh, shut, uh, it's going to be down, okay, in any reason, for example, any natural uh, disaster happen or uh, any, any, any possible things uh, which happen in the Amazon RDS uh, main database server. So it will automatically route to the uh, uh, failover database. So basically, the uh, failover database is help you to uh, your application up and running uh, in the every situation right uh, so uh, basically uh, what amazon uh, rds will do it will uh, create the same uh, failover database for example using this uh, same uh, same data in the across the multiple availability zone right so it will up and running. So at the same time, for example, one uh, main server, one database server is going to be failed over. So it will automatically route to this uh, failover database service and, and it will be provide the services uh, on your application. <clears throat> so these are the uh, main things uh, while using the uh, RDI deployment in, uh, in multiple availability zones. So it can help you to your application up and running in every situation and uh, it will provide you the high availability and low latency option also. So uh, these are the benefits uh, which which is uh, used, which is uh, help you to really uh, help you to uh, get the access. Okay, so uh, let's understand this the failover uh, in case of any uh easy outage uh high availability okay so as i mentioned uh, if some if any data uh, will goes down so the it will automatically redirect to the failover database and it will give you the uh, the services uh, keep uh, keep in ready so basically it is provide you high availability for your application right <coughs> So the data is only read right to the main database server, right? So uh, the main domain database server have only the have the rights uh, have only rights permission, okay? Write and read permission, okay? The 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 replicas have only the read permission. So so the main uh, so as you can say the admin uh, database have you can uh, write carry uh, write uh, uh, write and uh, remove the data uh, on the particular database but uh, failover data have the replica so it will automatically uh, uh, cha uh, keep changing when it uh, done change on the main uh, database service okay so uh, can only have one other easy as the failover <clears throat> it can only uh, one availability zone have uh, you can use the failover okay if the one uh, database server is goes down so all services is basically uh, serving uh, while while the uh, second uh, database services okay so that that option you can use in the uh, relational database services okay so now let's understand the uh, RDS uh, in the multi-region, how it, uh, how it uh, configure or how it uh, use case while using the multi-region multi -region database services, okay? So basically the multi-region uh, availability, as you can see uh, in the diagram, the main server is in the middle, okay? The US one, the second is the UE, us is two and the ap south is so there are uh, different uh, availability zone uh, okay so there are the in middle there are ma main uh, database server and the second replica uh, is the us is two and the uh, other replica is the ap south is two okay 
so basically uh, uh, this main rem uh, rds is uh, uh, is providing the services with the application also and you and there are these two uh, rds uh, replicas also the providing the services on the on data on the particular application right <clears throat> but as you can see over here the using this uh, uh, replicas to application the, there are only read permission is there uh, but the main master have uh, the right permission on the on, on every uh, aspects okay so basically these are the this is the uh, diagram for using the uh, using the multi region uh, multi region uh, uh, rds uh, to consider because, uh, so let's understand uh, this is basically replication cost is more uh, uh, more efficient because if you uh, if you uh, using the multi uh, multi region uh, or multi availability zone okay so basically it will cost you higher than the normal okay then uh, it will help you to disaster recovery in case uh, in case of region issues so this is uh, helpful uh, in if you have one region goes down so uh, there are two uh, or regions is also available at the same time right so you can uh, take the services on you can uh, access the services you uh, while using the uh, different regions so basically it local performance for the global reach okay so basically it will locally uh, uh, globally it will only read option available uh, while uh, the one main region goes down right so we, basically it will help you to uh, your application uh, keep uh, up and running right so for that purpose we use this rds uh, deployments right so let's understand uh, let's understand uh, in aws console how to create uh, rds uh, okay <coughs> so let me log in in my aws account Okay, so right now I am in uh, my AWS uh, account console. So as I as you can see, the uh, region uh, which is selected is North Virginia, US East one. Okay, so uh, let's go and search RDS on the search bar. So these are the uh, database services uh, which is uh, you can consider. Okay, so let's uh, understand first. This is the dashboard you can use. This is the dashboard basically for the RDS. Okay, so database instances you can use this. Then increase database limit. Allocate storage is between zero TB to hundred TB, right? The databases you can create it from here. The query editor the snapshot you can take it from here the export from uh, in s3 you can use s3 from the uh, uh, from the save your data backup on a particular s3 bucket right then the automated backup is also there okay i will show you one by one okay the subnet group also so let's create one database okay these are Sorry. Mm -hmm. It will take time because the database service is taking time to create. Okay. So uh, while you create uh, the database, there are two uh, options are available. There are the standard create and the easy create okay so you can uh, use uh, as your requirement okay the easy create is basically recommend recommend to the bad practice configuration some configuration is uh, 
you can change and some configuration is already uh, preset uh, as your requirement and in the standard create you set all the configuration option including one for availability security and backup you can <clears throat> you can set by your own requirements right so we use this standard create and in standard create we take that mysql server okay <coughs> okay so let's uh create let's select the mysql server okay so show version that support multiple availability cluster information you can uh, select the multiple uh, database cluster uh, you can uh, enable it from here okay for right now we'll just uh, create the normal database services and there are uh, mysql server version is also available <clears throat> let's take it in the 8.30 okay uh, now you can uh, select the template also the production uh, environment the days uh, the day when taste environment or free tire environment so if you select the free tire as you can see the multiple options uh, is the uh, gray off right you cannot have access while using the free tire okay so let's select one uh, day taste for the uh, example and i'll show you the <coughs> options are available so first is availability and the durability so as you can see over here the multiple uh, availability zone uh, database cluster is there you can uh, consider and you can use this while using the uh, multiple availability zone okay now the database uh, setting the you have to give name for the database so let me give the name demo rds okay now you have to create one uh, a new username and password okay so you can also uh, create a uh, wire own or you can also select the auto generate password so aws will give you the auto generated password you can also use this uh, option while you're using this no worries i'll i'll type my password on you can put anything okay now you can now there are uh, instance configuration option is there so instance option uh, basically there are two options uh, the standard classic the included uh, m classes the m family and the memory optimization classes which is a uh, high uh, ram usable uh, like r classes the r family okay <coughs> so family is based on your use case if you have a high memory use case uh, 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 uh application so you can use the r family to uh, ram family and if you have a uh, minimal or general then you have to use this uh, normal family it's showing invalid password let me The contain any following slash whatever. Okay. Yes, so let's understand this. So there are uh uh, many families are available like uh, dbm 5d, 5D <coughs> sorry x lag so basically uh, this family have four virtual cpus 16 gb of frame and the network bandwidth is and uh, 150 gb of instant storage okay so let's uh, scroll down a little bit and see over here the two virtual cpu the m6 uh, gd large so this have two virtual cpus 8 gb ram and the 
uh, network bandwidth is uh, 4750 mbps okay so let's consider any <coughs> now in storage option uh, we have uh, ssd uh, io uh, high input and output option one okay and allocated storage there are uh, by default 400 gb okay let's keep it uh, there are uh, provisional uh, high uh, input and output uh, <coughs> status okay the storage auto scaling option is also there okay so if your uh, database required uh, uh, auto scale so it will uh, increase your storage database while using your database services okay so you can also connect your database uh, to the ec2 instances if you have running any <coughs> running any application on the ec2 instances you can also connect the database on the on on to the direct ec2 instances okay but we don't have any as of now so just select don't connect the ec2 okay and there are vpn option is also available uh, vpc also available the demo vpc uh, your your organization vpc you can take and you can see this okay now the public access the rds you can also uh, port open to access to the public okay this is basically the options which is uh, given in the uh, the dev template we just use the free tier because it will cost uh, <clears throat> hourly okay so let me select the demo dbs okay now uh, admin just keep it admin <coughs> sorry okay so as you can see in free tire uh, we have uh, available option sorry in free tire there are uh, available option is t3 micro and uh, the t2 micro uh, it is uh, one virtual cpu one gb ram and it has one two virtual cpu and one gb ram okay and and there are two gb uh, two virtual cpu and one gb ram and the network bandwidth is 2000 okay so let's uh, take this and the storage option is you can also choose uh, there are uh, many options are available like uh, general purpose 2 general purpose 3 the <clears throat> provision iops it means the input and output uh, uh, storage uh, services uh, if you hire then you can use this uh, services okay so uh, there are uh, available option is auto scaling okay so if it require your uh, your data storage will go up okay no connectivity okay now let's just keep it ipv4 default vpc database subnet group we don't have any subnet group as of now okay just keep it same okay password authentication the iam user the data fed authentication give you option that you if you have iam database you can select this if you have uh kerberos Ker uh, authentication you can use this and the monitoring enhance you can also use this monitoring like every 60 second or uh, default role right so you can also use this uh, options in while using this but okay so it is also uh, giving you the estimate monthly cost okay so you just go through it okay now let's create one uh, database okay so database database is creating okay let's wait and let's explore the more options 
you can also see here <coughs> your password okay for your database to access this let me refresh it will it is <coughs> as you can see the region we have uh, provided that us east 1d and the size uh, which we selected that uh, dbt t3 uh, micro okay let me refresh again it will take some time to create okay so while it's creating let's uh, explore some more options okay so from connected in security there are default uh, vpc group and the port <coughs> basically the port number is basically used in the database services is uh, 3306 it's 3306 uh, once it's created the port number will be shown okay so basically right now it is creating so that's why the port number is not showing here now in monitoring the log configuration <coughs> sorry you can also see the cpu utilization database connection all the uh, uh, details in the graph graph option the graph thing okay configuration can I... Okay, it is still in creating mode. Let me refresh again. Okay, maybe it will take time. Okay, for meanwhile, uh, let's uh, take a break to 10 minutes. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, the uh, database is also created. It will take five to 10 minutes. So let's uh, take the break to five to 10 minutes. And then after uh, we'll continue.
<coughs> okay guys uh, so uh, as you can see our uh, database uh, so rds uh, database is basically created right the demo rds it is now in uh, available state right so now you can use this right so just uh, click on it and you can uh, convert into the multi uh, availability zone deploy right you can uh, stop uh, temporary you can delete it from here you can restore from s3 also it means <coughs> sorry uh, if you have uh, any uh, data backup on your s3 bucket right so that in that case you can also uh, recover it from the s3 to taking the backup so let's uh, take the backup for using the snapshot okay uh, so let's uh, take a snapshot okay uh, in a snapshot and there are db instance database instance is the demo rds and let's uh, give the name is demo rds backup okay if you can uh, take the snapshot uh, it will uh, it will <coughs> it will uh, give you the uh, creator snapshot of the particular database okay and and that database you can store up to uh, this s3 bucket and also you can uh, create it here from uh, the new database right so it will also take the time okay that while for meanwhile just uh, uh, check this automated backup also okay so uh, you can as you can see the you can use the data backup while using uh, the snapshot it is called the manually and you can use the automated database also okay in automated you can also create the restore point okay and you can mention the name also <coughs> okay so for replicated also the retained uh, option is there in option in backup and restore option as you can see the restorable time uh, showing the time okay <coughs> uh, let me do back okay so it will automatically take uh, the backup uh, while the while using this just go to setting <coughs> sorry it will as you can see there are options are available the earliest uh, restorable time the latest restorable time engine it will show the zones it will show okay so that uh, how you can if you have a uh, uh, database or any saved uh, in S3 bucket, so you can also take it from uh, there from our database. Okay, so basically this is how you create our database, and from here you can also uh, take the uh, data back backup. As you can see, the backup is also available now. So from here you can use the backup. You can also access the things okay you can also uh, restore the snapshot you can migrate you can export to s3 you can save it to s3 bucket right if you have uh, uh, implementation so you can use this uh, thing so while using the uh, database services okay <clears throat> so uh, these are uh, so this is the basically uh, no, a small topic which we just uh, covered mm -hmm. uh, in this <coughs> AWS RDS. Okay. So, <coughs> you can also explore this uh, RDS uh, option while using this 
okay the database is okay so basically this is the things which uh, we are uh, using the aws databases okay the cpu utilization as you can see also there let's let me show you from here you can see the details right and, and you just uh, scroll down logs and events okay it will uh, show the database created backup uh, the all the details uh, which is available in here in monitoring you can see the cpu utilization database connection the free memory how it uh, the free storage is there so all uh, the required uh, details is uh, available for this here so from here you can uh, take the access and you can uh, take the uh, take the required action which you required okay so basically at that node we just uh, completed the rds okay so uh, uh, that's it about the rds uh, amazon a whole uh, for uh, next topic let's uh, <clears throat> let's take the next topic uh, which is uh, the gate okay so i'll just uh, give you the go through the overview high level overview for the gate okay what is gate and github okay then after uh, uh, tomorrow from tomorrow onwards i will show you the i will show you the uh, practicals of the particular gate okay so let me first uh, delete these things <clears throat> for deleting just select this uh, database and delete it okay type delete you will be build back up okay <clears throat> okay let me delete the snapshot first So just delete this snapshot. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Snapshot is successfully deleted. Go to database. Select database. Go to action. Delete the database. Main auto backups. Just delete. Yes, I have already. Okay. The weather retaining automated backup is after seven days. Create final section. Yes, I done this. <clears throat> Delete me. Okay. Okay, so from there you can delete the things. Okay. So uh, it is deleting the uh, our database instance. Okay, so basically we completed our uh, AWS uh, from today onwards from this uh, last topic RDS. Okay, 
for for uh, now rest of the time i will give you the high level overview of the uh, git uh, the version control system git and github okay what is that and then after uh, from tomorrow onwards uh, we will uh, uh, we will learn the git practicals on the uh, uh, how to create repo uh, git bash uh, okay the pull git pull git push that all the things we will covering uh, practical by tomorrow let's i'll give you let's a uh, high overview of the git version control system okay so let me open this uh, then i will uh, share my screen again <coughs> okay Okay, so let me start uh, the Git uh, session. So let me share my screen. <coughs> okay, sorry for that. Okay, so now uh, after the aws okay after the cloud aws uh, aws uh, web services uh, there are uh, we are using the version control version control system so basically the version control system is basically uh, to <coughs> to uh, control your to managing your repo your repo it means your code okay so for example if you have developer can uh, write the code and it will uh, in his personal machine so for the version control for uh, it will uh, manage by or it will uh, accessible by uh, your other organizations employee for that uh, we use the version control system basically version control system is uh, uh, help you to uh, address the particular repository particular code repository okay which is um, uh, considering <coughs> that the multiple users uh, can access and to download uh, okay and and work on it and it can also upload it uh, for uh, in, in in version control system it will go it will called uh, push and the push pull and the push base uh, uh term right so in version control uh mainly there are uh, uh using git to uh, particular uh, to our industry we will use git okay so let's understand first uh what is the version control system in the uh, particular uh, scenario so we the way to manage files in the directories on the on the repo on the hub which is uh, called the version control system so it will uh, managing your file okay so it will track your uh, file your repository uh, we will call that as repository to the folder so it will manage your repository on the hub so that uh, and it will also track track hold the repository to uh, who can change over the time right so it will give you the law basically the details uh, so who who uh, change the log who change this directory who change the particular code uh, right you can also give the name you can also uh, uh, assign the name on the particular uh, particular uh, uh, repository so that you can uh, uh, monitor this and you can uh, uh, consider these changes right and there are also recall previous changes option is there so you can recall these changes you can uh, 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 take the previous uh, data backup on the on the data right so these are the basically options uh, which are uh, 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 included in the version control system so version control system is basically uh, to manage your your repository uh, as you can say directory file in a such way that uh, that uh, the the other person have the uh, 
the the authority or the uh, option which is giving that is providing to us uh, using the version control system right so version control system is mainly used to uh, to correct to select the data repository and the uh, storing the repository okay so let's understand the git right so <clears throat> we are basically use git and github for the version control system <coughs> okay so git is basically a version control system to design to make it easier to have multiple versions of code base sometime across the multiple developer or the teams right so uh as i uh, as you know uh, we have the developers team right so so uh, many developers uh, will work on the same code right uh, for example uh, they have uh, both uh, the shift is different right so one uh, one uh, developer is cre uh, working on the one particular uh, code okay so he just uh, write something and he just uh, push the code he just uh, save the code and push to the git repository okay so uh, the other other uh, with this with his uh, code or with his tag that uh, for example he was working on the particular button on the sign in button or the login page okay so he just uh, take the uh, you, he can uh, take the uh, uh, tag that uh, this is the submit of this uh, particular login page or particular button page okay button code so you can so other person will uh, came on uh, came to the office and he just uh, uh, pull his code okay so with this tag so he can uh, easily uh, uh, monitor or he can easily realize uh, understand that uh, the other person has done this work on the particular code so uh, for uh, after that uh, code i can uh, do it so for that re for that uh, reason we use git okay so basically for that reason uh, use git to <clears throat> to basically maintain the code and uh, with the multiple developers uh, and the teams between the teams that uh, that the the track uh, for the tracking the particular code okay to track the particular code and the uh, and the and the option or the as you can see the uh, growth which uh, which is monitoring by the uh, particular uh, your teammates across across this GitHub uh, GitHub repository okay it is allow you to see the changes you make use the code and the easier easily revert them also right so it is also <coughs> provide you the option uh, to uh, it is also provided the option to uh, to change the code right to easily uh, it is uh, you can also uh, filter that that uh, in last uh, submit or last uploading the code uh, the which is the different is uh, is there right so you can also uh, see the particular <clears throat> particular uh, code changes on the on the machine right that can also uh, you can uh, uh, consider as a gate okay so as i uh, mentioned here the gate and the github is not same there are both the different tool basically git is the uh, tool of the version controlling system okay and the github is the repository which is give you the storage to the store your repository on, on the platform the github is basically giving you the uh, platform which you just create your uh, storage account or the github account in github account you can store your repositories okay to access the repository we use this uh, git and to store your repositories on the on the github uh, basically store your repository on the on the github right so it is uh, the different tools right but uh, but it can uh, use you can use this in a in a you know in, in a parallel way right right but uh, as you just have to remember that these are the uh, different tools which you are using the git and the github okay
so let's understand first uh, what is github okay so github is a website that hosts the git repositories on the remote server right so as i mentioned the git is a is a uh, website which uh, which can give you the platform to uh, your, to uh, to save your repositories to host your repositories on the github right so it will give you the uh, storage platform right to save your data save your data save your uh, code on the particular github that anyone can uh, push and uh, download it from the particular uh, github so hosting repositories on github uh, facilitate to sharing the code base among the team by provisioning a gui right so github is a gui web uh, web page <coughs> that uh, it has a facility to share the code base like if you have uh, written a code uh, and you can just uh, push it to the github so uh, other teammates have also can can have also access to take this uh, repository to your local machine okay and it will also work upon the same upon it on the github okay so basically the it is easy to use because it uh, it, it provides with this graphical user interface so it's easy to understand uh, to 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 manage the code okay easy to fork or clone uh, repos to a local uh, machine okay easy to fork it means you can also uh, you can uh, download it uh, uh, the repository the same code with in your machine or clone it means also you can uh, clone download your uh, the same code on your on your personal machine okay to using the github basically giving you the uh, giving you the option right <clears throat> So first, let's understand what is the repository, right? Uh, what is the repository? Repo, it means the repository. We just uh, call repo, uh, uh, repository uh, into the repo uh, in the in the in the GitHub term. Okay, usually used to organize a single project. Okay, it is basically used in the single project. We can save the a single project uh, in the in the one repo. Okay, so so uh, in multi project we use the multiple repositories right multiple repository means have multiple projects okay so in a particular dedicated repo have uh, the code the dedicated uh, uh, code only okay which is uh, managed by the uh, particular uh, uh, project uh, project engineers okay or project uh, 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 employee okay the repos can contain folder and file images, videos, uh, spreadsheet, and data sets, anything your project need, right? So uh, GitHub have the uh, options, which is uh, you can save your folder, file, image, videos, even spreadsheet, and the data sets also on the on your project needs, right? It's, it's the whole, uh, everything you can save the uh, repository. Uh, it means the folder which uh, which is required in the particular needed in the one project so that you can also save uh, in the particular repositories right so in repositories <coughs> you can uh, store your files uh, the required files and on the project the videos uh, if you want to add that you can uh, share that you can save on the particular repositories, the spreadsheet, the data sets, and many more uh, as your requirement. You can just uh, save to the particular repo. Okay. So basically, repository is the folder in which you can uh, give the name, which is the project name. And in project name, the required needed for ex for code, for file, for folders, any data. You just save saved in the particular project, so uh, it will help you to to <clears throat> it will help you to uh, consider and uh, consider and track for the for the code. Okay, for the code basically to uh, to in a certain way that you can manage the whole uh, different project at the same time. 
that's why we use the github repository uh, in in the organization okay <clears throat> so this is basically the git config command okay so this this kind of git config command i will uh, i will uh, show you in the next lecture how to configure git how to uh, create the git account okay so this this is basically the git uh, <clears throat> username configuration name right and the configuration i will show you in the next uh, next lectures okay so basically this is the uh, overview of the git and the git repository right so uh, at that note we just uh, conclude today's session because uh, right now <coughs> the, the whole git and git repository have the taking time okay so tomorrow i will show you to uh, how to install git how to configure the git okay and uh, basic git commands right <clears throat> and the uh, basic overview also i will uh, give you tomorrow session okay so uh, let's conclude today's session okay uh, uh, do you have any uh, option or do you have any uh, query or question no okay so uh, let's meet tomorrow and uh, for uh, more uh, we will uh, uh, explore on uh, tomorrow session okay okay yeah thank you for the time okay